the objective behind this experiment is to uh, learn how in a qualitative way we can know the anion that exists in a salt that you don't know what it is. All you can see is that it's got a noun salt and it's a white powder. And you can imagine all kinds of ions making this salt. Now, today we will be studying the how can we know the anion, so the negatively charged ion. Uh, not all the anions, of course, but we will be studying to know the uh, fluoride, the chloride, the bromide, the nitrate, uh, th uh, thiocyanate, uh, carbonate, okay, and sulfate. Okay, to do that, you need to have a map. Now, whenever you are traveling, if you want to go in, to a place that you don't know, you use a map, right? So that's why in your lab manual on page 55, you have a map that you will follow. When you will be given the unknown solid, you will follow this map, so then you get to the correct result by the end. But this map is missing. It's missing the observations, okay? Now, when I say qualitative analysis, this is different than quantitative. Now, quantitative, this is when I want to know the amount, when I want to use a stoichiometry, which is not gonna happen today. But today, it's a qualitative. A qualitative analysis usually is based on observation. Observation of what? You have seen it in chapter one, that difference between chemical change and physical change. So the observation of chemical changes are known. We can start by precipitation, change in the color, gas evolution, okay, or heat. Okay, so today we will see, we will complete this map by doing a series of experiments. The first one, test one, is that you have, you want to do the test for fluoride. So if you take any tube, you add sodium fluoride. So if you take sodium fluoride, say it's five to 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five. And you add to it calcium nitrate. So that's calcium nitrate. You add to it five to 10 drops. You can see that it became cloudy. Cloudy in Camp Street means precipitation. If you add more, you will see a white precipitate. If you let it sit for a while, you will see a white precipitate. So this is your first test and your first observation is that if I have fluoride in my soil and if I add to it calcium nitrate, the calcium will react to the fluoride to form CaF2 and that's going to precipitate according to, so the, to the solubility rules that you have learned in chapter 4. So I will go faster also this time. Now you have to test for chloride, bromide, and fluoride. So that's why you will take three tubes and you will add to each sodium chloride. You will add to each 10 drops, 10? Yes, 10 drops of roughly, yeah, of each sodium chloride, sodium bromide, and sodium iodide and then to each tube we will be adding four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so we will be adding 
silver nitrate, so two to four drops. This is sodium chloride. Now you all know sodium chloride with silver nitrate, it's gonna give me silver chloride, and the silver chloride is not soluble, so I should see a white precipitate. This is how you should be thinking when you are adding the reagent to each other. So one, two, three, four. So white precipitate. The white precipitate is the silver chloride. Now, what's gonna happen with the bromide? Two, three, four. It's a yellowish or pale yellow precipitate comparing to, compared to this one, okay? So, and with the iodide, You can see that it's yellow, greenish precipitate. Okay? So now, if I hold the three tubes together, if you know this information, it's going to be very easy for you to distinguish the anion that exists in each one. White precipitate, this is chloride. Yellowish is bromide, and yellow is iodide. So now that I have my three precipitates of chloride, fluoride, and bromide, I will add to each few drops of the ammonium or ammonia, six molar ammonia solution. Okay? Here's the ammonia solution or ammonium hydroxide. Uh, two to six drops. Look now. One, two, three, four, and five. If I need to add more, I will add more accordingly. But what do you see? The precipitate is it's dissolving. Right? So when you have a precipitate that's made out of chloride, when you add to it ammonia solution, the precipitate will dissolve. Now, in a similar way, you will see also, so you have to add more, it depends how much you added before, that the, also the precipitate from the bromide, it's what? It's dissolved. Now when you add ammonia to the iodide precipitate, you will see that nothing is happening. Now, as I said, you have white precipitate from carbonate and you have white precipitate from chloride. To know which one is that, chloride or carbonate, you add to it ammonia. If it dissolves, then it's chloride. If it doesn't dissolve, then it's what? It's carbonate. Now, for the iodide, which did not dissolve, we will add to it sodium thiosulfate. Just to show you that the precipitate should dissolve. So these kind of things, you have to learn how to do that, how to solve the issues that you face in the lab, okay? If I have too many and I have to add a lot, just transfer to another tube and do your test. Okay. Now the sulfate, if you take 5 to 10 drops of sodium sulfate and you add to it, you add to it 2 to 5 drops of barium chloride. Now the barium chloride with sodium sulfate, it's gonna give me barium sulfate. Barium sulfate, you all know that it's gonna precipitate according to the solubility. Of course, guys, when you do all these tests, you have to fill your observation in the tables, corresponding tables, pages 56 and 57, okay? So you, you can go, get, go back to these observations. Test number four is 
easy, but you have to follow carefully the steps. And I will remind you one more time, you will be using concentrated sulfuric acid, so you have to be good. Now, the steps you take, sodium nitrate, around 10 drops, then you add to it 2 molar sulfuric acid, 4 drops, you homogenize, and then you add the tip of your microspatula of iron 3 ammonium sulfate. You make sure that you dissolve the solid in your solution. Okay. Now here, you tilt your tube to a 45 degrees angle. And then you start adding your sulfuric acid. You add enough to form a layer. So look, the sulfuric acid is going down slowly. You start to see two layers forming. You keep it tilt like that until that no more sulfuric acid is going to the bottom of the solution. Then you adjust it to an angle of 90 degrees, vertical like that. And with time, you already can see the brown ring that's forming between the layers. Okay? But with time, this ring, it will be more, uh, it will be clearer. So you can, you can see it. It will be more visible, okay? See the ring that separates the two layers? Okay. So this is an indication of the presence of nitrate in your salt. Now, test for carbonate. Test for the carbonate, you have to be quick when you do it. This one. So you take five to twenty drops of sodium carbonate, and when you add to it the hydrochloric acid, you can see there is a gas coming out. Now if you suspend the drop of calcium hydroxide you can see it's a clear drop and you get it close to the gas okay now what's going to happen the gas which is the carbon dioxide is going to enter the drop which contains calcium hydroxide and it's going to form the calcium carbonate which is a precipitate it's not going to dissolve in water, so that's why when you take your drop out of the tube, you will see that it becomes turbid. Turbid, it means like it's cloudy, yeah? so the precipitate is forming inside. You will be able to observe this by yourself. Okay? So here you have to be quick, guys. And as you can see, the gas is still coming out from the tube. The last one is the test for the thiocyanate. This experiment or this reaction, you will observe it for the third time. You have seen it in investigation 13 when you studied equilibrium. In experiment 13, when again you uh, calculated the equilibrium constant using Beer Lambert law, and you will see it now. When you put iron 3 with 
thiocyanate solution, what's the characteristic color that you see usually? Do you remember? Red, brown, dark red, brown. Okay? So now if you take if you take five to ten drops of sodium thiocyanate, so sodium thiocyanate, so it contains the thiocyanate. I, uh, an iron, and if you add to it iron nitrate, this is the iron nitrate, you remember this column? So now that we have all these observations and you recorded them, and using the map in page 55, every one will be taken in a noun solid, and your grade in the lab report will be based on whether you will guess correctly your unknown solid or not. So here it says unknown L, M, N, O, P, etc., A, B, C. I have a list of these unknown solids. If you say I have a noun L, and I know that this is, for example, carbonate, and you tell me that this is sulfate, this means you did not understand anything from this stuff. Right? So, you have to be careful with your observations, record them, and you have to know how to follow the map. Now, any questions?